I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Stealthy approach that a fierce attack. She is hard and never looks back. A guardian of fleets, a destroyer's pride. With gearing at the helm, the tide she'll ride. Salute the gearing with stars and stripes. A symbol of power in countless types in world of war. Hey team, this is Ripper. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. This is a map with Sleeping Giant in the gearing, and it's really going to be uh, an interesting video and really talk about the gearing and the power of what it can do today. But before we begin, like, subscribe, all button below. Appreciate all the supporters of the channel and can't thank you guys enough. Another 4,000 subs. We're going to do another another premium giveaway. And as always, thanks you guys for being a really good sport out there, being, being very good at building community and uh, making it a better place and learning something at the same time. So here we go on the map, everyone's favorite map, Sleeping Giant. And as always, it's a very interesting map. Now, you know, everybody likes to do this mad rush to this middle area and kind of hide in there with the destroyers. And also, it's a very great contesting point in the center, especially in clan battles, and even randoms. This is a fun choke point right here at the opening of Sleeping Giant and also choke point there. But today, we're working in the south. Forgive me, I had to use an older map. And we'll just, uh, and we usually start in the north here. So I just, and today we were starting in the south. So we're using a flip side. Of, so disregard this blue square. I'm just hiding it. That's where the ships usually start. But today we are starting in the south. He's a Charlie. And the basic strategy is very simple. And you got two, two decisions to make here. One, you can either go everyone um, or majority of the destroyers and everyone pushed as alpha. Or you can be more conservative where you do an even split and work your way up the middle here. Or again, it's really just two options. Either you're working your way up the side of uh, Charlie and up through Bravo or you're going to Alpha. Very, very straightforward, very simple. Um, today, we elected to have both destroyers push through to Charlie, bully the destroyer at Alpha, take it, and it forces the enemy to have to either one, either come through Alpha or come th straight down and uh, blow through Charlie. We have a um, San Martin now. I've noticed a lot of people are picking San Martin, which I think is kind of busted right now because a 9.1 concealment and 9-kilometer radar, which lasts a while, it really destroys you know, a lot of majority of destroyer players because it's unsuspecting. You, you can't, you don't know it's there until it just pops up, and boom, by the time you turn it around, you're showing full broadside uh, to a San Martin that has radar. So that's essentially, a, you know, my personal opinion, a, a destroyer killer. So... Um, we're going to send St. Martin to the east here and just kind of loiter around this area just to deter any kind of push right here because what will happen, and I've seen a lot of teams will do this, well, they'll have a destroyer either coming in here, they get boom bullied by the St. Martin, they got to turn around, and now you have a bunch of ships shooting on a San Martin, which has the F key, funny button key, which then can just pop that heal the whole time. It's like a zombie ship, very, very difficult to kill, especially at range, especially kiting. And it's just annoying. And they can hold a lot of advances just with a San Martin alone. Meanwhile, the majority of the bulk of the force is going to push um, just through Alpha right here. And we'll have one... Obviously, we have the same Martin holding the flank right here. We'll have all the destroyer, the rest of the, the cruisers. We'll have one cruiser go to Alpha, one cr battleship go to Alpha. The other battleship will linger at Charlie to fire into both directions, either northwest or northeast. And, of course, we have the final cruiser is supporting Alpha and Charlie as well, just kind of lingering right here. So it's a very straightforward, basic design. It's nothing cosmic. I, I won't talk too much about it, but this is the, the decision that majority of the time we make. We'll just have a 2DDs push to Alpha. And basically, it's fun because I like it because it forces the enemy to also have some kind of engagement with the destroyer there and pushes right into there. And you really are just having a blast with destroyers shooting at Alpha and seeing who comes out on top. After that, once the destroyers are all dead, you're going to see the enemy will advance you know, heavy through uh, Barra because they got to take the cap, otherwise they lose based on points. And that's where the choke point starts to happen and you're firing at all angles inside of um, Alpha Bravo Gap right there. Meanwhile, if they do elect to push down the center here, we always have the ability to come back to the um, east, take either take... We can either go back to the north to take Bravo from the from their rear and, and then pull back and shoot them from behind. Or we have the majority of ships at Alpha just firing basically into their broadsides right there. So it becomes a very, very difficult... Um, say, and vice versa. They can do the same thing to us. You just got to basically be, have the... You know, it comes down to the skill of the destroyer player. If you can eliminate their destroyers right off the bat, take them out, take out their eyes and ears uh, and, and torpedoes. And now you're just basically mopping everybody up. And we're going to see how it plays out again. Showcase, this is more showcasing off the gearing in clan battles and, and competitive and just the, the, the destroyer power uh, overall. 
And the, but this is the basic uh, strategy for Sleeping Giant. We'll take a look at the video and see how it actually plays out. But yeah, this is the majority of the the the, um, the things that I've seen now. I will talk about if they do does the, if the enemy does do a massive push. Like I've seen a lot of enemies do this. Well, they'll come over to the eastern side and really, really heavy push down this way. It can be difficult to defend. It just depends on how you're able to maneuver and readjust to uh, a lot of these pushes, especially in the, for the battleships and cruisers. You just got to be a head on a swivel and know that you got to turn back around, be able to counter through this choke point right here. Here's another choke point. This is the big one right here to take Charlie. Meanwhile, the destroyer player has to have situational awareness to know they can go to a Bravo or push back to the east and spot and twerp that way. Because these islands right here become difficult for that counter counter uh, defensive push. So you got to really keep, make sure that, hey, when you see this push happening, you got to coordinate with your team. Hey, they're coming out here. Be careful. Be careful. Start moving around. And of course, you have their destroyers always pushing around the flanks here, which is also devastating setting but again it, it's not as bad as it because you can if you're in the center here you're able to respond very quickly you don't have that much distance to travel meanwhile if you're flanking on the outer side look at all that distance you have to travel and, it, and that becomes a little bit more difficult throughout the, the video or the gameplay but we'll take a look at it and see how actually how it goes All right, team, here we are on the map, everyone's favorite map, Sleeping Giant, with the gearing here, and uh, it's going to be uh, the initial push and position with the torpedo shot right through the gap there, and what we're doing is we're just doing shooting preemptive torpedoes because we're thinking that we're going to have a gap right here where the, the DD will usually hide, and usually DDs like to hide at this northern section right here. You can see my mouse right there. They like to hide right there, and I would too, uh, and just kind of sit there to cap and hold. And that's kind of the initial positioning for the destroyers. This is a two destroyer push with St. Martin out to the east, as we talked about, to do that distraction. St. Martin broken, in my personal opinion, with a 9.1 detection and 9 radar. It almost acts like a destroyer that's really big. And you can see the Shimakaze is already turning it away. So we have a bully um, at Alpha here uh, push. Two DDs uh, trying to really just see if we can cap it and also push the destroyer out as well as take on, uh, especially having two torpedo destroyers. And again, what I'd have said before is the gearing, I really um, underestimated how powerful this thing is because the gear, the, the torpedoes would go and reaching out to 16 and a half kilometers, as you can see right there, really can just do anything it can, reach out and touch somebody. Shimakaze torpedo is going already going out, as you can see right there, and it's just a very, very uh, devastating blow to any kind of uh, assault. You know, just having that many torpedoes, that much damage, the fear that it puts into anybody. You can just see uh, initially, look, you can see people are just already slowing back, hesitating, and it's a very, very powerful front, and I really recommend it. It's awesome. I think the gearing, uh, man, what a oldie but goldie, and still proving to be very strong in today's meta especially in competitive and clan battles is and i can tell i can see why people pick it now and now while the torpedoes are going out there to the um the 16 and a half kilometer range we're going to shoot i called for hey let's shoot torpedoes to the gap we've got torpedoes with their single launch so that means we have a daring right here so we're going to be very very cautious about where he's at rpf is indicating he's to the north and again we're going to play conservative here we've already got two caps really just kind of waiting and seeing what the enemy do, does and usually what they do is they freak out and make mistakes and they just bum rush or do something and you're probably going to see that Meanwhile, let's talk a little bit about the gearing. Very, very old Big Goldie class gearing. A real actual ship. You can go to, uh, go actually visit it and everything. It's a museum. Uh, it has torpedoes that go out to 16 and a half. What you talk about? Oh, there's the daring right there. The guns on the uh, the, the gearing are very, very strong. Uh, 127 millimeters. Nothing too fancy. They just do what they have to do. They, look, they just blow up and uh, destroy modules, kill destroyers. They start a lot of fires. If you build for the reload, they're a decent reload. And they really just pack a wall up. Now, the, the only downside is, look at the, the uh, shell ballistics. They are very, very uh, lofty and wonky. And you got to really lead them a little bit longer, more over, more so than, say, a Druid or something more of a high velocity, like the Soviet line destroyers, where you got really shallow shell ballistics, which make aiming very, very easy. The gearing is very lofty, very difficult to aim with, but they allow you to shoot over objects and mountains and uh, hills so that's the one easy down uh, uh, or easy part of it but again it is hard because you got to actually lead a little bit longer it floats a little bit longer so that's the downside there we also have the smoke screen as you can see right here very very long american duration smell look at the timer right there you already have about a two minute smoke screen so what i've seen teams do is they will like put a wall uh, in front of an advancing force and a lot of people like to use that as their uh, the, the shield uh, and, and mask enemy movement it, it turns out to be very very strong and powerful so people like to do that and I recommend it as well and uh, now we're just using the old oldies but goldie guns that just really love to start fires and nothing all it does are these are just superstructure hitting guns that's what they're designed to do 
They are really just there to shoot, blow up superstructures, and uh, start fires, and that's really much where all the damage is. Now, the, the reload rate is not the greatest. It's 2.8. It's still good. I mean, I would like it below 2, but man, if you want to build for it, go for it. I'd rather build for reload on the torpedoes because that's the bread and butter of the gearing. The guns are there for great defensive purposes. Kind of like this is the counterpart to the Shimakaze. Shimakaze guns are terrible, but at least the gearing guns can do way better damage, a better DPM, and so forth. So um, I definitely recommend you know, using uh, the gearing uh, as guns uh, a lot too. Look at this. They, they, when they hit the superstructure, which all they are, just shoot, I just call them superstructure guns. Look at that, 1,700 damage. You can get and you can get a lot of damage off this thing, and you got two minutes smoke to farm. You can start a lot of great fires for it, and that's really what it's there for too. And uh, look at, there's another fire. And again, it's really just there as a, a deterrent against destroyers. And then when you're re ready to farm with your two minute smoke, boom, you can do that to blow up superstructure. Then boom, splash one, there's our first kill. We kill a battleship, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, look, a destroyer blowing up a battleship. So very, very strong indeed. And now we're just going to work on the GK. And this is pretty much me just, and it's something soothing about this. I don't know. It's just something that you're just shooting superstructure damage, 2970, boom, boom, boom. And uh, yeah, there it is. Just blowing up superstructure damage. We got torpedoes on the way. You notice the spread is decent. There are slight bigger gaps so when you start shooting more longer range, but I mean, this is just money right here. It's exactly what I like doing right here. And it's really, really awesome. Yeah, something, yeah, like I said, this is a therapeutic moment right here, just sitting, shooting superstructures, blowing it up, and yeah, nothing too fancy, nothing too cosmic, you just sit here and blow up an advancing uh, battleship, and his secondaries can do some damage and can be a nuisance, look, even start fire, so you got to keep throttle juking back and forth, the, the uh, engine boost is very, very long, I like it too, so that's the way I built for it, about two minutes plus, so you get that if you get the build for it, and here we go, we got to run away from the daring and uh, yeah, I wouldn't duke it out with the daring though. Daring is I got a better reload than I do. Okay, so we'll speed it up here and we'll go turn our butts back around. And this is pretty much the power of the daring there, blowing up the uh, the, the battleships that they're taking on the in the middle. And now we just mop up the the, the destroyers and look like daring right there. This is this is what we can do in the uh, the gearing. So right here, mopping it up. Now look at those shells, very very floaty. So, but you know what? They do go over islands and uh, hills, and they do a very good job of doing that. Yep, and look at that, and Daring uh, actually hit the rock there, so very bad on him, but it's okay, we'll take advantage of it, and look at that, the reload rate's decent, 2.2 second reload with adrenaline rush, and boom, splash three, look at that, three kills in the first nine minutes of the game, and that's how we will mop that battle up, but um, after that, it's pretty much us running around the map and uh, cleaning everything up, but that's the gearing in a nutshell, um, let me know your thoughts on the gearing, uh, how do you like it? What is the strategy? What's the best strategy for um, Sleeping Giant? And it's pretty, pretty darn awesome. And again, the power of the gearing, I think, it, it, one, it's a tech tree line, so anybody can get it. It's still powerful in today's meta. It's fast. It's stealthy. It's got great concealment, 5.9, great torpedoes, good long lasting smoke, engine boost. Guns are decent, and they do what they do. Look at this right here. Unsuspecting uh, Shimakaze. Slow turrets for him, but our turrets are faster than Shimakaze. So again, the counterpart, this is a way better counter to the Shimakaze than I believe in. Boom, there it is. Killing the last destroyer off the bat right there and again gearing is super power i understand why people play it now i've been having great success with it we had like seven wins in a row but as always bill will be at the end of the screen let me know your thoughts on the gearing let me know your thoughts on the map uh sleeping giant and as always you guys stay safe and we'll talk to you guys soon cheers